Hello, my name is Triadar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a high elven house in Minecraft. Let's get started. So first let's take a look at our house here. I call this a high elven house uh, because this is the style I've developed for my high elf civilization that I made. It's based mostly on Rivendell from Lord of the Rings, except with some uh, notable differences. Uh, the key characteristic of this style here is, of course, uh, the sweeping out of the gables over the roofs and everything here. Just like so, as you will notice, on all the ends as well, as uh, we also have these, uh, these smaller nested roof designs here that uh, stick into the side of the larger ones, like so. Here, this one is a glass as well, because it's designed to be just a little porch for you to come over here, you know, and you can, you can relax under it and everything. And if you have shaders uh, and uh, whatnot, you can get a nice glass uh, light effect, sort of a kaleidoscope effect, through the multicolored glass and everything. Uh, but that's the side. Your front door is, of course, right here, with a little uh, entranceway and two columns uh, flanking that as well. And we have some generous uh, side rooms as well over here. Even a couple of little dormers up here in the uh, second story. Uh, back here at the back, you will notice we have an elytra landing pad for you to make your perfect uh, three-point landing on. It is, of course, held up down here uh, by a, an interesting uh, set of archants. Characteristic of the high elf design. Who knows how the high elves are able to make this uh, this stand up and work? But you know, they can with with their uh, uh, high elf um, stonework and everything. Of course, we have just a chimney back here. Very basic chimney design. And for the roof. Um, Instead of going with a, a tessellated uh, roof tile pattern, I've decided to go with sort of an incised, uh, sort of stretched hexagonal pattern here for the high elf roof designs and everything. Of course, it's designed to be done with obsidian and uh, cobbled deep slate. And of course, the rest of the design, as you can see, features uh, in stone and in stone bricks, as well as some sandstone where we need stairs and slabs. But I bet you thought the day would never come where we would be using in stone bricks for anything, but here we are. They work pretty well. Uh, if you don't want to use those, you can always revert back to sandstone or, or perhaps the, the smooth sandstone or the cut sandstone. Any variety of that would work well instead of the, the bricks here. If you either don't have access to those or you just don't want to use them. Uh, but I'll mention that when we take a look at uh, the materials here in a moment. Let's uh, land and go inside in our house and see what we've got in here. So on the inside in our, in our entrance room here, we have, of course, immediately opposite from the doorway, we have a fireplace back here for you to put three campfires and everything. Just like so, for a warm elven hearth for your home. Uh, for lighting, of course, we have uh, a very elegant end rods on glass panes right here. And we have some uh, paper lanterns with some glowstone and uh, banners. Uh, two banners st uh, uh, stacked on top of each other right there to create this little uh, paper lantern design. It sort of very, very gently moves around in the breeze and everything. We have sparkles coming off of this here. Of course, we don't just have any, any plain torches in high elven designs. They are far too sophisticated for that. Uh, but they, they, uh, they do have a lot of stained glass, though. One of the things with the high elven architecture is I like to remove as much wall as possible and replace it with as much glass as possible. Like so. Uh, also, for the floors, uh, you will notice uh, the floors are entirely glassed over. And of course, we do have a pattern below that. Uh, now, I will remark that if you don't uh, like to have glass on your floors like this, you can, just, uh, you can just use the pattern that's below the floor and just raise it up by one block if you don't want the glass. Uh, but with shaders and everything, you can, see, uh, you can see one reason why I prefer the glass floors for the high elf uh, houses and everything. Not only does it make it uh, spawn proof, uh, but uh, it adds uh, ju just a little bit of shimmer. To everything, of course, this is a this is a house of the high elves, 
So, you know, it has to be ultra delicate and refined. Uh, of course, speaking of refined, we have our ceiling up there as well. Made out of dark oak. All the wood in here is going to be dark oak. And of course, for the ceiling, we do have the blue glazed terracotta. It's also, that also forms the floor of the, uh, the second story. So let's, uh, let's take a look here up our stairwell. This brings us to the next level here. Where you can see we have our roof above. And of course our floor uh, below here, just like so. And of course for the glazed terracotta, you just have to do a random pattern for this. If you want to try and make a pattern out of your terracotta, you can. Uh, but sometimes those are difficult to build, so I didn't, I didn't include them in this. Of course we have our window over here, overlooking our little, uh, our little portico. Right there. You may want to add more lighting up here and everything as well. Uh, you could probably do with a few more lanterns and uh, and in rods and everything along the sides as well. Uh, but over here, as I uh, showed you earlier, is your elytra landing pad. Uh, I think it's probably big enough for you to be able to land on, but uh, if you're if you're as clumsy a flyer as me, you can probably just you know fly straight through the doorway and just crash into your house in here as well. This area would be nice for a storage system. If you wanted to put uh, a bunch of chests on either side of the wall over there. And then down here you could put your, your more main living areas. Um, like, like your kitchen and your bedroom and everything. As well if you want to. But I will leave it up to you to decorate the house as you, as you see fit. Everyone likes to decorate a bit differently so that's why uh, generally speaking, I don't uh, do houses uh, fully fully decorated because everyone has their own style, and you need to you need to be able to stamp your own identity on the house as well. So yeah, that is going to be uh, that's a tour of the High Elf House. We'll start the phases in a moment. If you want to build one, we're going to need the following uh, a decently long list of materials. Uh, unlike all of the Roman builds and everything, you will need zero blocks of diorite for this building, but you will need uh, 1,605 blocks of cobbled deep slate. Uh, regular deep slate would also work. Uh, perhaps basalt, if you like that a bit better. Just, just some sort of dark gray block, I think, down here for this. Uh, the, the, the colors of the gray and the endstone and the obsidian, I think, work really well uh, for, for this type of build here. Uh, you will need eight dark oak planks. Uh, eight dark oak tree trunks and uh, 266 dark oak slabs. For the floor patterns, you need 66 blocks of lapis. And uh, for the building itself, you need 73 blocks of end stone or sandstone, wh whichever you prefer to use. They're almost the same. Uh, 2,457 blocks of end stone bricks or a regular sandstone or cut sandstone or um, I think what's the. Blue sandstone will be the other one. You can try to use here if you don't like the endstone. Uh, you can um, do that as well. Uh, for the fireplace in some areas, uh, you will need 111 chiseled sandstone block, just, just the one with the, the pattern on it. Uh, 294 sandstone stairs. 59 sandstone slabs. Uh, 1,228 blocks of obsidian, uh, primarily for the Floor details down there below the glass, this band here, and for the roof. Now, if you don't want to gather the obsidian, uh, you can substitute this with perhaps uh, some black stone or some polished black stone or any variety of black stone that you prefer for that. Uh, you could possibly also use uh, dark oak up there instead on uh, for, for the roof portion uh, if you prefer that as well. Uh, 78 blocks of glowstone. For the flooring, you need 370 blocks of blue glazed terracotta. It's probably my favorite block of glazed terracotta. It works well for quite a lot of things. And then we need quite a lot of stained glass. Uh, so you need 117 light blue stained glass, full blocks, and 54 panes. And then 93 full blocks of cyan stained glass, and 62 
panes, uh, 356 blue stained glass full blocks, and 59 panes. 108 purple stained glass blocks and 56 panes. And exclusively for the, for the flooring, you need 230 blocks of black stained glass. Uh, you also need blue stained glass for the, for the flooring as well. well. We'll talk about that later in the tutorial. Now for the paper lanterns and everything, you need 64 blue banners. If you want to do a different banner color or if you have like a banner design you want to put, on your, your uh, lanterns and everything, you, you can do that. Uh, two dark oak doors, of course, the best kind of door. Uh, 20 dark oak fences or chains, for the, just, these are, are just for the lanterns. Of course, for the lighting, we need 21 and rods. Of course, you may need more, more end rods than that. If you're doing in survival, you may want to, to light up things a little bit better than I have in the reference model here. Uh, but yeah, that is the materials list. So let's take a look at the dimensions. So the, the red box here outlines uh, the, the maximum extent of the house. It's, it's mostly these, these hangover points here. And the dimensions are as follows. It is 55 by 45 and 35 blocks tall. So all the way down there to the top, up there I think somewhere. Well, no, that's going to be to the top of the chimney. It's going to be 35 blocks tall. Uh, for the rest of it, though, we will just uh, we'll just count everything out. I will use uh, the red carpet here as sort of a laser pointer pointing device. We're going to be doing, of course, the same format that we always do, one slice at a time, uh, all the way up, 3D printing the house from the bottom up in discrete layers as we go. Uh, and, of course, before we get started with that, I want to say, as, as per usual, the world will be available in the video description for both Java and Bedrock versions. For those of you that are just here for the download, uh, uh, and, and that's fine if that, that's all you want. Uh, for the rest of it, though, let's start on the house. Uh, so, uh, for the, the front steps, we, you want to put down three uh, sandstone slabs and then uh, three blocks of endstone behind that. And then to the side of there, we want to have three uh, blocks of cobbled deep slate that way and then turn for three blocks this way and then run for one, two, three, four, and then go one block back here, and then run for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen blocks, and then turn there for two, then back one, and then we want to go for, uh, what is that, seven blocks of end stone across there, and then do the same pattern here, and then run back for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 blocks there. And then turn here for one block and then go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One back here and then for uh, 2, 3, and 2, 1. And then what? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blocks there. Uh, turn for one here and then go for one, two, three, four. Uh, leave out a block here and go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen blocks. And then two blocks here and then run for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then one block back here, then probably another nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then two. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 blocks. And then run for 1, 2, 3, 4, turn the corner, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then turn the corner here, and this is just back to the entrance, like so there. And uh, that is the entire perimeter counted out for you, so let me show you this from the top down. Behind that, you want to go ahead and fill everything in with your deep slate, like so, and then you want to use this uh, this pattern here with uh, the obsidian, the lapis, and the glowstone, just like so. We're going to have this below our, uh, our layers of glass. Uh, I, now, like I mentioned, if you don't want the glass, you want to build this layer up one block higher than it is. All right, so let's go over here and take a look at the side room. As you can see, it's just, it's a very simple repeating pattern, just like so.
Uh, it got a little messy here in the transition to the doorway, though. You might want to, you might want to take um, take those blocks there and reverse them. Probably look better. All right, and let's go on to the next phase. So every place you put uh, the cobbled deep slate, you want to go up and build that one block higher. So let's go around here. You can see we've got another sandstone slab. Three of those for the doorway. And then according to the count that we just did, you want to put the cobbled deep slate one block higher. Another run of, uh, what, seven slabs there. And then cobble deep slate along the back here for the fireplace. Uh, we want to put uh, just a bit of obsidian here. Uh, and here on top of where these three torches are, you can go ahead and put down your campfires for your fireplace. I didn't include that in the tutorial, but you are going to need three campfires for that. Just like so. And of course, just extend everything up. Like you see done here. All right, now behind this, we're going to be putting our glass. And because this effect is very subtle, what we're actually doing here is we are doing a checkerboard pattern of blue and black glass. Just like so. I think you can, you can kind of see it maybe, maybe at this angle here. The shaders make it a little bit more difficult than it might otherwise be. Just like so. But to make that more apparent, I, I already thought of that, so... Every place here where you see the diorite, uh, that is where the blue stained glass should go. And every place where, you, of course, you see the, the, uh, the other glass blocks here, these are the black stained glass blocks, just like so. And you should come up with, uh, with that pattern there. Something I like to do in my high elf designs, I always like to give them uh, glass floors on the ground level. Very elegant and, and delicate. Just like high elves. Uh, for the next phase, let's just take a look at that from the top down. So we're going to start, we've got our foundation out of the way and our floors. So now we're going to start building the house. And of course this is where we're going to be using uh, the first of a whole lot of our end stone bricks. Uh, end stone bricks, very unloved in Minecraft in general. You don't really see them popping up in too many builds, uh, but I wanted to include them for this just because you know they're they're, they're so rare to be found. Uh, so here you can see on other, on either side of our doorway, our door here, we just have a couple of blocks of cobbled deep slate, and then we have the the end stone uh, bricks laid out like so, with just a little uh, little extra end stone uh, there in the middle. And we're already doing our windows as, as well. So as you can see, the, the pattern here for the glass, um, all the glass, uh, you will notice when I did the materials list for the glass, the, the blocks and the panes and everything, all the colors all had different numberings to them. And that's because I just I used MC Edit to use a randomizer brush, and I had it automatically change uh, one type of glass to four. So uh, that's why all the windows in this should look uh, should look somewhat different uh, from each other. Like like all you really want to do with the glass here is you don't have to get the exact colors and combinations right. All you need all you really need to do is just randomize them, and they'll they'll look really good. We want to have sort of that uh, that that nice stained glass effect that that uh, we like to have. Now with my stained glass, you may have noticed as well one of the things I also like to do is to alternate panes and slabs. Uh, like, uh, I'll try and show this on the ground here. So we, um, we would be doing this vertically, like, like so here. Like every, every place you see a, a full block here is where we would be placing a full block of glass. And every place, I don't have any handy, every place where I'm putting a torch here, not on the front dummy, uh, every place where I'm putting the torch here, when I'm doing it correctly, uh, this is where we want to have the panes, just like so. So you can see here with this window, we have uh, two full blocks and a pane, just like so. Uh, so on top of that, we would want to reverse that and have two panes and a full block. 
And then the next block level up, we reverse it again. And we reverse that yet again, and so on and so forth for as high up as we need to go. Just like so. We can get a lot more texture out of our windows by doing this tessellating pattern. All right, so I think uh, I think the uh, the blocks and everything for the bricks are high contrast enough that I don't really have to count these out. You can see we've just got uh, an intercolumnation spacing of one over here, and they end at the front, just like so. The ones at the back are exactly the same. And of course, here for for the bottom of our windows, we, they all have two blocks with a pane in the middle, just like so. The, the blue stained glass on its own is exceptionally difficult to see. It is there, though. And of course, we have our side door over here. And windows and blocks along the back. Of course, here we have for our fireplace, for our hearth, we have just the first couple of chiseled uh, sandstone blocks here. And a little fire guard here, which is some stairs and a half slab. Of course, we want to have our campfires. Back there where those torches are, just like so, and a little cobbled deep slate on either side. All right, another window, more end stone bricks here for this interior dividing wall. And then here at the back, of course, we have a series of three windows. And along the side, we have uh, two bays of two windows. Just like so. And along the front, we have a bay of three windows. Lots of windows in, in the high elf architecture, as I said. Uh, over here, of course, we have the first couple of stairs for our stair rail. You remember from the tour. They went up like uh, they went up here, and then we had to turn and go up there. That's uh, that's the best fit that I could find to add stairs into this building. Uh, generally, um, sometimes I'll have enough foresight to actually design the building around the stairs instead of trying to cram them in as an afterthought, but uh, not, not so for this particular building. All right, next phase. Let's start over here at the doorway again. So we've got our sandstone stairs. And our in-stone bricks behind that. Of course, we can go ahead and install our doorway. Like so there. And you can see what I said about the glass here. We're, we're, we're reversing this and doing two panes and a full block. Just like so. The colors don't, don't matter. Just pick from the, the list of colors that you have. And just try and, and not, not put two colors adjacent to each other. Just try and randomize them from those four colors as much as you can. And it'll look just fine. So over here for the column bases, same deal. Stairs on all four of those for all six column bases. Over here, our, our other doorway. Or our dark oak doorway. Now I chose dark oak for the high elves because I thought the, the, the rich dark color made a nice contrast to the brightness of the endstone and the sandstone. First window back here, more end stone. Detail for the fireplace. And for the end stone, for at this point, you're pretty much just building them all straight up and reversing the, the block and pane combinations for the glass. Just like so, all the way around the building. And of course, for our stair, we've got, you know, one block higher and one block back. Just like so. All right, let's go on to the next phase here, which is, it, this phase is mostly more of the same. Uh, for our um, column shafts, though, we have obsidian for those here. As I said, if you don't want the obsidian, you could perhaps use some uh, some polished black stone or just, just some re really dark block for this if you don't feel like mining the obsidian or you don't have access to it. Not that much obsidian, though. 
uh, here for the doorway. This cowl deep slate. And detail for the glass. For the six columns here, you you see uh, you can see that we're doing them just the same as the doorway. Just like so. And if you want to go ahead, these are going to be six blocks tall in total. So if you want to go ahead on top of these and stack up six blocks of obsidian, you can go ahead and do that, and that will finish those. Uh, detail here for our fireplace. Just like so. I didn't want to get too intricate with the fireplace. Uh, because, believe it or not, you can get too intricate in things with Minecraft, I think. You, you've probably all seen these types of builds. You, you can generally recognize them because they, ended up being, they end up being encrusted with stairs and half slabs. And I didn't want to do that for this design here. Because uh, high elves are more elegant and refined. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, these blocks here overhanging this because this here is the start. And we can just see it of this uh, elytra landing pad we have on the back. Of course, this pad is kind of optional. You could remove it from the building if you want to. It's not uh, it's not purely integral to the design, but I just wanted to add it just uh, just just something fun. And over here, uh, no change for uh, the bricks and the glass and everything, just like so. I think you have a handle on how to do all that by now. Uh, over here, of course, our stairs one block up and farther back, just like so. And then we can go on here to the next phase. Start at the doorway again. Uh, over the doorway, we do have some stairs arranged, like so. And extend all your glass and uh, end stone bricks up another level. All your, your columns and everything here on the side. Same deal for this doorway. Of course, we have a, we have a bit of glass behind that as well. Take a look at the detail here for the fireplace. We have just a little low arch over the fireplace, like so. First, we have our end rods here suspended on glass panes. The high elves do have a love for glass. Of course, being a, a very refined and elegant material, like the high elves themselves. Otherwise, they wouldn't be the high elves. They would just they would just be the the uh, the average elves. All right. So here we of course have uh, we have our landing pad arch extending out. It's the same on both sides, by the way. It's just it, it's a symmetrical design, just like so. And all your glass and end stone and everything just going straight up for the meantime. Uh, oh, and for our, our dividing doorway, we do have just a little arch right there. All right, next phase. Start over here at the doorway again. We have this little pattern of uh, sandstone stairs, glass behind that, of course. Uh, for the side, we do have uh, more glass and more more in stone bricks. Everything, no real surprises over here. If the side door, you want to do it the same design as the front door, by the way. Or the, the slabs and stairs and everything. Let's take a look at the fireplace. Just like so. And uh, back here for our supports for our landing pad. Mm -hmm. 
And all the side walls here just going up the same as they have. All right, next phase. Started our door away. We just have some plain glass here, like so. And even more in stone bricks and glass for all of these details. Uh, we do also at this level have uh, the beginnings of our paper lanterns hanging down. These are going to be from this glass block here. That's just three blocks over. Well, I can't place a block there because of the banner, but three blocks of area gap and then place place the glowstone for that one. And then it's going to be the same over here from that point there. Take a look at our fireplace. We're finishing the arch for the fireplace right here. So that'll be our hearth done. Of course, we're going to be extending this all the way up. It's going to be the very last thing we finish. It's going to be our elegant high elf chimney. So we also finish uh, this little dividing arch here. If you want to, you can you can put uh, dark oak and a door right there as well if you want to divide that off a little bit more. Uh, but I left it open. Open and inviting. I like, uh, like the high elves themselves. The architecture should reflect something of the, the character of its people, I think. And uh, no surprise over here for the, for the glass and uh, the end stone there. Over here, though, we do have our stairs have now come up to a little landing, which uh, we make with this four little half slabs right there. Of course, we have just a very delicate uh, and exposed staircase here. Uh, no need for guardrails because, you know, uh, high elves would never make a mistake and fall off their stairs. That just, uh, that just doesn't happen. Uh, so over here, of course, we have uh, the placement for the paper lanterns. So if we take uh, this central point here and count out for one, two, three, four, and then count over for two blocks on either side, and then place the lantern there. And that should be the same back here. One, two, three, four, five, well, no, five, six. And then that there to help you place those. Now you don't have to place the paper lanterns at uh, this phase exactly. You, it'll become more apparent once we put in the ceiling where they hang down from. Uh, but if you want to start building them now, I just wanted to go ahead and point that out. All right, next phase. Uh, over here, of course, uh, we now have our little arches forming and we have all over the building. It's, uh, it's, it's out of view now, but you remember we had uh, everything in, in the high elf architecture is, is some form of pointy gothic arch. If you, if you haven't noticed that, uh, that motif. Well, you know, Minecraft, we only have a few blocks so th this is as pointy of an arch as we can possibly make. So here, of course, we have our end stone, a bit of glass, and here and there, we, of course, now have the cobbled deep slate. Just like so. Along the sides and along the back. And then just a couple of deep slate all along here. And then all along the middle dividing wall there. And then out here we have just a little bit more of our uh, uh, elytra landing platform uh, supporting arches. Right there, same deal for all these windows, by the way. They, it, once you build one of these windows, all the rest of them are exactly the same design. Just a repeating pattern. And along the front and everything, of course we have our stairwell here. It's now has its landing, so we're turning and we're going up uh, that way.
Now on top of all of the lanterns, we want to place one full block of uh, dark oak, and then you want to place your second uh, banner on top of that. I'll go ahead and remove that. You see we have one banner here, down below there, and then just place another one right there to get the, the uh, lantern effect. That's, of course, we already know the positions of the glowstone, so that's where all of those go. I think that's all there is for that phase. Let's go on to the next one. Starting at the doorway, we're using, of course, uh, now we've transitioned from the cobbled deep slate to the obsidian. As I said, you can use perhaps some black stone or some polished black stone if you don't want to use the obsidian. Uh, but of course, uh, obsidian is of course, a form of volcanic glass. And we do know the high elves have a have a bit of a, a penchant for glass, so it kind of fits. Of course, I am aware. Uh, my my take on high elf design is probably quite a lot different from what you will have seen other people do that they might entitle high elf architecture in Minecraft. It tends to be a lot more uh, sort of like curly and somewhat whimsical. And that's not really, uh, it's not really my style. It's not what I see the high elves doing. I've always thought uh, it's more elegant and refined, like, you know, like Rivendell looked in Lord of the Rings. And that's the style I've tried to take as inspiration and adapt for uh, my high elven architecture style here. And this is the first building I'm doing in this style, by the way. There, there's going to be more in the future, hopefully. Um, uh, but I just wanted to uh, pontificate about that for a moment, if you if you don't mind, uh, because I can only uh, I can only say, you know, place glass and endstone here and there so many times. I need to talk about something else for my own sake. Uh, for all the lanterns, you want to go around and put uh, uh, the fences, the dark oak fences, on top of those. Uh, now, this is a place, if you want to, you can use uh, the chain. Uh, you can use the new chains for this instead of the fences if you want to. I think that would look okay. And then uh, detail here, just a couple more blocks for the landing platform supports. And, of course, all the windows, just the same pattern. You're mostly extending the, the, uh, the end stone bricks straight up. And... Uh, um, obsidian on top of all the cobbled deep slates. And extend up your stairs. Right. All right. Next phase. Uh, a lot more of the same. A lot of obsidian and a little bit of uh, in stone bricks here. We also have, of course, our capitals right here. I do have a more distinctive high elf capital design, uh, but uh, it only works for the larger, larger pillars, like the the the, the three by three design, and we've only got little one by ones here. So these are pretty much um, uh, sort of the Roman Corinthian pillars, except they've been repurposed for the high off designs. But you need to imagine that these have um, uh, these have uh, capitals um, like the acanthus leaves on these would be like swirling around, and have uh, have more intricately and delicately carved designs. Uh, than the Corinthian order already does. But, you know, Minecraft is, you know, upside down stairs. It's all we can do. And so here over the front doorway, of course, we're finishing our, our little, our little uh, very small and delicate uh, pointy gothic arch. Just like so. And you want to put uh, more obsidian on top of all the other obsidian that you place down and do all the, of course, the capitals here. The same as the ones by the door. And we're almost going to finish uh, the supports right here. In another, another several phases, we'll be building the, pl the landing platform itself. And just like so. And uh, let's go on to this phase over here. 
So you can see we're building the lowest portions of the the, uh, the coffering of the the dark oak slabs for the both the, the ceiling and the floor. Uh, but let's start the doorway. We'll start at the exterior and then we'll take a look at the interior in a moment. Uh, now, um, you want to uh, you want to double stack up your stairs here upside down on all the the capitals and everything, just like you see done here. And then on top of all the obsidian, we want to go around and pretty much put a band of unbroken um, uh, cobbled deep slate or regular deep slate, whichever one you used, or maybe even basalt, around there for that. Finish all your capitals off over here underneath your little pavilion. Wrap it around the chimney, around the back. And then here we just have little five blocks here to uh, finish our support. And then over here for our staircase. All right, uh, let's land, go inside and take a look at this from the bottom. So we can see in this, we're just making this little coffered pattern of uh, dark oak slabs, just like so. In some place we're using uh, dark oak tree trunks. Well, these are actually spruce, but in the, um, I, I forgot to change them in the reference model, but these these should be dark oak, wherever you see these here. To, you know, of course, we wanna have the entire building be one wood type. Um, uh, but you would just wanna place those here. And then where the fences are here, you can, you can perhaps use chains to, uh, for your lanterns here, or you can just use the fences like so, and then you just want to make this little coffered pattern with your slabs for this room, and then this pattern for that room. Of course, we, we, uh, we ran out of room on the side over here, so these had, to be, uh, these had to be a little bit shorter than the other ones. It's sort of a, an, an, uh, an asymmetrical design on this. It's kind of how it worked out. And then we had to knock it out entirely here for the stairs to be able to, to fit through. So it's not as clean of a design as I would normally like. Uh, but sometimes uh, you just have to, to uh, take what you have and work with it. All right, next phase here. Pretty simple phase, actually. Uh, so on top of uh, all of everything, you need to go around and lay around a whole bunch of... Um, uh, in stone bricks and a random pattern, or you can try and put a more regular pattern with the glazed terracotta. The blue glazed terracotta, of course, my, my favorite kind of glazed terracotta. Uh, for the entranceway here, we just want to slab that over with full blocks right here, just like so. And then we want to extend that out and uh, cover uh, this area here for all our pillars, of course. On both sides, just the same. And then back here over this. Around our chimney. Wrapping around the back. And of course, here we have uh, the design for our elytra landing pad. So here's where it connects at the front from our supports that we've been building the entire time. And here is the design for that. Now it's probably just easier if I show it for, to you from the top down. It's got, uh, it's edged out with the um, in stone bricks. And on the inside we have the cobbled deep slate and everything else uh, is full blocks of the four colors of stained glass. Of course, we use all the black stained glass already on the first floor. Uh, but all this uh, from here on out is just going to be full blocks of the, the blue, the light blue, the cyan, and the purple. Of course, if you like different colors of stained glass, you can, you can try and make substitutions. You don't have to use these colors. Uh, but I do have to pick some set of colors for the reference model, so I picked the ones I like the best. And behind them, of course, we have our little entranceway. 
And then I think you can see we've mostly got a two block thick band of in stone bricks around the building in most places. And everything else behind that, you just want to fill it in with a, a randomly facing direction of uh, blue glazed terracotta. And here we have just a little detail of some upside down stairs around this section here for our stairs. And uh, this is the end of the stairwell, by the way, because this is now our second story. So I'll just uh, show you that from the top down here. And then we will move on to the next phase. It'll be somewhat easier than uh, that last one. Uh, so here we have some little carved detail over the doorway. Some stairs and, and chisel blocks. A sandstone. Behind that, of course, we have just some endstone and everything. And then behind that is sort of like a baseboard. We have uh, another uh, line of obsidian on the interior blocks. We'll take a look at that in a moment, though. Uh, so here we want to extend all these blocks up one level for the pavilion. And we have a series of uh, half slabs and stairs and some chiseled blocks in the corners here. As are the tracery around our windows at the top. So over here for our landing pad, which we finished on the last phase, by the way, your landing pad is completely finished. Uh, so we want to put in some details here with some sandstone slabs and stairs and blocks and everything. Just like so. And then turn the corner and just make a full run along there. And then we have details here along the front. Uh, with full blocks of uh, end stone and some slabs and stairs and everything. Like that there. And on the interior here, all you need to do is run around and place the baseboard of um, obsidian. In some places, I probably used a couple of blocks too much of obsidian. Uh, I do try and be economical with with some things in, in some, some types of builds when I know that you're probably going to be using them in survival, but... Uh, and in some places, you'll probably find any place that obsidian block was used that's not visible, you can probably just, you know, uh, fill it in with any other block. Start over here back at the doorway. we have got a little uh, exposed block of uh, glowstone here, a little glowing block of detail. Just like so. Uh, and now at this level, we're starting on our roof designs, our very characteristic uh, uh, arched gothic uh, high elf roof designs, just like so. And they're pretty simple designs to do. You just need to pay attention to the alternating of the cobble deep slate and the obsidian. And of course, over here for our pavilion, we have glass. The only difference in this design is uh, the obsidian has been replaced with glass for this. Uh, now, as an aside, I know we're pretty deep in, into the tutorial to mention this, but I forgot until now. Uh, for the roof, uh, for for the obsidian as we go, if you want to, as as maybe as maybe an optional upgrade, uh, you could replace all the obsidian on the roof with uh, more stained glass if you wanted to get a, a a really a really nice arched effect. Just like we have the same effect for the pavilion on the side here, you could have the same effect for the roof that's uh that's going to be uh, that we're building now. But let's continue on. Take a look at the uh, the detailing here. Stairs and glass and uh, end stone bricks is pretty much what we're doing for all the details. And of course, uh, the cobbled deep slate and the obsidian is going to be confined to the roof tiles. Our doorway here by our landing pad. 
Uh, I didn't include one, but if you want to, you, you, can, you can put some more dark oak in there and add a doorway if you want to as well. But I decided to leave it open for those of you that just wish to fly straight in to your house. Now here, of course, we do have the, these little blocks here are, are overhanging because we have these uh, two little dormers that are inserted into our roof at the top. Some upside down stairs here. Uh, n uh, normally I would leave this as glass, but our, our stairway was uh, getting in the way of that, so I had to, had to make some space. And we're back here to the front. So we can go on to next phase here. We're in the home stretch now. Uh, over here, uh, detailing. For the front and everything. Some stairs and our um, chiseled, uh, was it sandstone and end stone bricks and everything. And then obsidian and cobble deep slate behind that. Here you can see just the beginnings of, of the, uh, the stretched hexagonal sort of chain link pattern that I use for the high elf roof designs. Very distinctive, I think. And over here, of course, we have the side pavilion. And you can see here from the deep slate and uh, hopefully from the, from the glass also, the full blocks and everything. And of course, it's, uh, it hangs out one block farther over. That's the rule to make, uh, to make this, this sweeping roof design, by the way. Uh, to do that, all you need to do is you just need to build a gothic arch. And every block that it goes uh, over one, you also want to push it out one. Like so here. You'll, you'll see this more as we go throughout the build. And uh, detailing here for the tracery around these windows. Some good old gothic tracery. Well, you know, as best as we can replicate it with just a couple of blocks. The roof and the chimney around the back. And over here by the doorway. And here for our little side windows in the roof. And then here along the front. All right, next phase. Start over here at the doorway again. Glass and deep slate for the pavilion. And of course the end of it is edged out with the deep slate, uh, not the deep slate, with the um, the end stone bricks. Just like so. I don't use end stone bricks all that much apart from these designs, so I actually uh, forget what they're called. I keep wanting to call them sandstone. I don't know why we don't have like a, some some good sandstone bricks in Minecraft, but with like uh, with like the red brick texture, but with sandstone. That'd be really nice, I think. Maybe we can get those someday in the default texture pack. Uh, detailing here. I think I forgot to look at the the detailing over here, didn't I? 
It's just upside down stairs and more glass, though. And the detailing around the front. Is there anything on the inside to take a look at? I mean, there are little delocations of the end rods and everything. But like I said, if you're doing this in survival, you're going you're gonna to need more lighting than that, probably. So I will leave that up to you as to the exact placement of those. And go here to the next phase. Take a look at the uh, doorway. We're almost done with the, the, the grand entrance over our little doorway here. More glass and deep slate and in stone. Just like so, of course, the high elven roofs being um, based on Gothic arches are, are quite tall. For typical roofs, much taller than the Roman designs. Uh, but that also lets us get a nice, uh, a nice high vaulted uh, attic space up here that we can use for a nice spacious uh, upper room. Detailing along the sides here. And detailing along the front. All right, that brings us back to the start there. So let's go on to the next phase. Beginning to finish this off here now with just a line of, uh, what's that, seven? Uh, in stone bricks, and then the, the, it's the same pattern for the roof and everything. As you can see behind this, we have a bit of the um, a bit of the the smaller end pavilion. It has the same shape as the larger roof design, but this one is slotted in uh, to the overhang of the previous design, uh, giving giving us a very characteristic. Uh, uh, type of architectural feature, uh, which I, which I quite like. That combined with a number of other things taken together, it gives a gives a very nice and convincing uh, high elf style aesthetic. The roof around the back. Deta uh, detailing here for the tracery. Just like so. Detailing along the front. And uh, time, well, this lantern here, time for the next phase. Uh, so where's the easiest place to count this? Start right there. One, two, three, four, five. Then over one, and then place your block. 
the Hame Lantern design as we've done previously. Uh, next phase here. A couple of slabs and blocks right there. And the rest of it is all roofing behind that. In a uh, three to one obsidian to cobble deep slate right there. Like so, some uh, detailing right here. All stairs. And of course we now have our chimney beginning to separate from the roof. And the side here. Uh, detailing here. And this side here. And of course the detailing along the front. And inside here we do have another lantern. Let's count from, uh, let's count from here. One, two, three, three. Four, five, six, six, seven, eight. That would be nine, and then place your block. Right? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Yeah. And then uh, on the interior here, we do have uh, we do have portions where the roof is now overhanging, like so. Now well, let's take a slow look at this from the bottom on the interior. And I think that's all of that. Go on to the next one. Uh, over here, of course, uh, at the end of my half roof designs, I like to put this little decorative finial on the sides right here. Now, this is somewhat reminis reminiscent of the, the Roman finial that I like to use, which is just, you know, that design there. But the high elf design is, uh, is, is different. It doesn't have this connecting block in the middle. I like to imagine that they're kind of like a, kind of like, like kind of like a carved swan wings. Well, you know, Minecraft. It's we've only got a couple of blocks. You don't have to really use your imagination on those if you want to uh, imagine them as carved swan wings. Um, detail here. And the roof along the back. Uh, and some more detailing here. It's uh, all stairs placed in various positions. And here, we've almost finished off our little uh, side window dormers here. Right there. Both of these are the same design, so just build one like you build the other one. Uh, detailing along the front. This detailing should be the same as what we did back there uh, at this point. And then I think that's all there is to look at for this phase here. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, let me see. So I think that uh, we finished off 
this little section that we've been building since the start there. So this section is all finished. Now from here on out, I think we're pretty much focusing only on the roof, uh, and then we'll finish up by doing the chimney. But I'll try and start at about this point in here uh, every time. Just for the sake of consistency. block of glowstone here and then in this little roundel. More details right here. The side roof and the details on the front. And then that brings us back to where we started so we can, we can go on to the next one. So just building our roof now. A lot of obsidian and cobbled deep slate. And a whole bunch of uh, stained glass over here for this. Of course, I mentioned as an option, if you want to make the entire roof stained glass, you could. Also, if you don't really like the stained glass portion over here, you can just fill stained glass in here with more obsidian or blackstone. And then just little little details tucked into the corner there. Detailing for the roof and the tracery along here and this and more glowstone in this little roundel. And then our little decorative uh, finial over here. Two of those to finish off uh, these little sections. And then detailing here the same as at the back. All right, uh, let's plan for a moment. Take a look inside. And let's go on to the next phase. We've only got, uh, what? Have one more phases to go, five or six phases, and then we're gonna be done. And let's start back over here. Of course, building our roof design. You can see by now, this is just a standard repeating pattern, by the way. It should be, it should be fairly straightforward, I think. You've, uh, d you've done enough of it by now. Capping off our glass pavilion with just a straight run of in stone bricks. And the roof along the back and then and the chimney. Some detailing here. And then just a straight run across there. Same detailing here is at the back. And then we come back to the front. All right, over here again. 
Our roof is just about to meet, so we're getting really close. Like so. Of course, we're going to have one of these little decorative uh, finials on the end right there. Some obsidian there, and of course, as you can see, we've got um, another tree trunk there, so that's going to be the uh, the top of our little uh, lantern there. And more detailing right here. For this section of the roof. Just a simple alternating block line right there. Of course, same detailing at the front as at the back. And I think that's all there is to that one. And so this phase here, really easy phase right here. We don't want to put just a straight line to cap everything off. Starting over here right there and then running all the way over to this point here where of course as you can see all of this um, all of these uh, in stone bricks are meeting at the top and a bit of detail here for the chimney and then for this uh, one block higher section of roof over here Something I like to do with the high op designs is have uh, have various sizes of roof all uh, colliding into each other and like nested inside and everything. It, it can look really nice. Gives it a very distinctive style, now, which uh, in this in this uh, house here we only get a little a little taste of. But uh, hopefully, uh, if I do future things in this style, we will we will see more of it. Uh, with that, and uh, let's actually land and uh, take one last look inside here, you can see. Just like so. And we'll go on to this phase over here, which, you know, as you can guess, is a really simple phase. We want to do just a straight run of end stone bricks starting here. Going all the way to the middle at a slab, and then all the way over here to this side at the back. Of course, that finishes all the, the intricate tracery and detailing that we've been doing underneath here uh, for the entire time. And everything. And then we want to put a little upside down cornice of uh, thin stone stairs at the chimney right here. And of course, uh, detailing here for this little decorative finale. Like every every place we have any little roof endings like this here, we want to go one block back and place a little decorative uh, finale right there. Uh, and I think uh, for this one, we'll just uh, we'll just skip this little face here and go right onto the last one where you can see that in its full expression here, one finial there, one in the middle and one at the end here. Of course, we have another one at this end here, and of course, this one that we built over here for the glass pavilion. Uh, and uh, to finish off the chimney, I didn't feel like slicing this up. All you really have to do is put down uh, two more blocks of cobbled deep slate, and then some end stone bricks, some sandstone slabs, and then do them in this pattern here. Of course, this pattern here echoes the pattern that we have down here for the arched windows. We just have a little little large uh, decoration up here at the top for that. Of course your smoke will be from your three campfires all the way down there will be coming out of there. And uh, once you have done all of that, placed your final two blocks at the top, your high elven house will be complete.
So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the High Elven House. Remember, of course, everything is available for download in the video description. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.